Okay, yes. Jen, Jen sent me some, uh, some images. And uh, since she couldn't be here, she also sent me descriptions about what she was, uh, what she was going for here. So uh, this is her first one, uh, breaking the rule of thirds. I'll just let you read what she uh, mm -hmm. put on the put on the screen here. So uh, uh, I think it's a th think it's a great shot. So yeah. and you would expect that the main bird would be in the center yes. sure yeah so yeah i love love the patterns on it and everything so mm -hmm. so that was her first one uh old shot she says from 2017 so oh i got them older than that so do you <laughs> <laughs> whoops i went too far uh here's another one breaking the rule of thirds and again yeah um i don't see how else you could do a, a mm -hmm. shot of a, a single uh, fish that like that that's one ugly fish okay <laughs> it is i you know i i was just it's interesting because i was just chatting with uh, becky humes um talking about uh i have a, actually have an advanced uh, scuba diving certificate we were just talking about uh diving in belize and so on and uh, so uh, i said i wished i uh had concentrated a little more on uh, underwater photography when I was diving, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, don't know if I'll get back to it after a broken hip. It uh, kind of restricts me. So, yeah. but anyway, uh, yeah, another another great one. Um, okay, this one, the rule of odds, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, I like uh, what she said. You can't always order up three of a kind, so uh, you got to kind of have to go with uh, with what you got there. So. Another beautiful shot. Sometimes the third man's out, you know. Yeah, there you go. Uh, another one on the rule of odds. Uh, well, this was just recently. Has anybody been out uh, in the woods lately to see what's what's blooming? I, I would imagine lots of stuff. Uh, th these are out. Uh, I don't know whether in the last few days we've had... Uh, uh, Oh shoot! Which we'll call it the the trout lily. This one has out, and uh, I, think I don't know whether the bluebells and the uh, oh shoot, the famous white one that I can't slip off my tongue. Yeah, trillium. Uh, trillium. Yeah. Somebody said the uh, yeah, but they might be. Somebody said on Facebook the other day that the Jack and the pulpits were just coming out a little bit. So, yeah. So uh, I guess, guess I'll have to get out. My spot I usually go to is out at Amon Park. Uh, Amon, Amon is good for the bluebells and the, and the trillium for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where's, it's that, where's that at guys? That park? Uh, about, about halfway to Allendale, um, west side Long of Grand Rapids. M, uh, on Lake Michigan Drive. Yeah. Okay. On the uh, north side. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to, you can miss the road really easy, but uh, there is a sign there easier to see headed west than it is headed east. Right. Yep. Yeah, and there's a, um, what is it, a Special Olympics camp or disabled, um, some, yeah, something there, camp there, in there also. A big kids camp on the edge of it, but Amon Park's quite large. Um, oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah, you have to descend down into the valley down there. Uh, I don't know the name of the creek, main creek that goes through it, but is I think that might be Sand Creek, but I'm not could be not sure. Yeah, yeah. You're and, saying uh, Amon with an A? Yeah. A M A N. Oh, A M A N. Okay. Yeah, it's. It'd be great for the um, for the plants coming up right now. So, all right, good. Uh, another one from Jan, um, Millennium Park, three weeks ago. And again, wildlife doesn't always come in odd numbers. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And here's one with her intentional blur. Uh, again, just a few weeks ago. So Jan's been busy. So with the intentional blur on the uh, the trees there so mm -hmm. 
and I really like this one. I I don't remember if she had this in competition or not, but uh, I, I love this one. So. Me too. So, uh, cool. Right. Another intentional blur, uh, the rubber duckies. So. Mm. I thought it was macaroni at first. <laughs> <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, uh, when I saw it, I thought the same thing. So. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting, the center ones uh, are quite in focus, and I, I assume they probably weren't moving as much. but uh, Yeah, not um, nearly as fast. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I like that. Me too. And this one, I, I think, was from the... Uh, the shoot that Becky shot or set up uh, several years ago um, where she yeah. had the uh, Becky the carnival. Becky bought another one of these online a couple of days ago that was really spectacular. Oh, yeah. She did the, um, I don't know how they do it, but it's steel wool and they ignite it somehow. Wow. And swing it around on a, on a cord, apparently. She had her nephews uh, out there with her. And, yeah, th those were great. Uh, some really, really cool images. People wouldn't think of uh, steel wool as being combustible, but mm -hmm. once you get that going, uh, you can't put it out. Is it oh, okay. like the friction? No, uh, you light it with a, oh. a match or something. Okay. But uh, because it's metal, it burns at a really extreme temperature. It, so you so it, it burns on its own, Steve. I, oh, I assume yeah. they, oh, okay. I didn't realize get, that. Get so. the oxygen to it and get the temperature to the ignition point. That guy has no sleeves on his shirt either. <laughs> <laughs> and I I assume you might see some of Becky's in in the club. So. Okay, cool. Uh, another one intentional blur from yeah, Jen. So. Dancers. <laughs> Back to the, the fire, I should ask my son, when his new neighbors moved in, she is a uh, fire, a sword, sword swallower. Oh, I, okay. Maybe I can find out where she works. Okay. Sure. Yeah, when, when Becky sh set up that shoot, uh, I think we had a sword swallower, we had fire eater. Um, wow. And, of course, okay. the, uh, you know, the, the swinging of the, the fire and so on so that, mm -hmm. that was kind of a fun shoot so and here we got the uh dancers okay steve well you know they, they talk about giving giving your subjects plenty of room to breathe when you when you take a picture but when i grabbed this shot and then got home and realized that the th two things I was taking a picture of were were in the corners. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then I looked at it and I thought, well, you know, that's totally not what you're supposed to do. But then I decided I liked it. <laughs> yes, I do too. Mm -hmm. Is that a sale? That, what am I looking at? That. It's a fishing boat. Yeah, but what's the white thing going across? Oh, the oh, white. That, the right. second second photo. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's... on the left. All right, the other one. I was talking about the sunset. Yeah, I was too, but on the okay. Boat. The other one is uh, you. You know, you want to keep everything level unless you don't right so that was a long dock down in florida at sunset and i i just severely twisted it when i post processed it so just you to give you a little uh uh dizziness if you were thinking about it. <laughs> it looks like you had one too many to drink <laughs> well i so, probably did that too but. yeah so you, you did that in the um uh, in the software rather than in the camera steve yeah 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 i think i did 
That was from a while ago. Okay, cool. I Thank like you. I like that one very much. I do. Yeah. The colors yeah. are really nice. Yeah. I, I love the boat, too. So. All right. Uh, these are some of mine. And um, the, the top left is, um, I think one of the rules was shooting at eye level, uh, basically. So uh, this one's actually, well, three of the four are from 52 frames. Um, a couple of weeks ago, it was um, shoot, shoot from below or shoot low right, or something right. like that. So uh, that's the, um, the statue at uh, St. Adelbert's Church over on the west side. Um, mm. And I, I guess the other rule, you know, a lot of people like to keep things, uh, you know, to look like they're shooting with a view camera or something and straighten the uh, converging lines and so on. But I kind of, uh, I kind of like the uh, converging lines of the steeple there and so on. And strangely enough that um, the sun was just hitting the cross at the top of the steeple there just oh, right. Oh, I very shiny. I actually, I actually did get the... Uh, the rays of the the sun coming off it, so wow. so that was kind of fun. Uh, the top top right one, uh, intentional blur. This was just a couple weeks ago uh, during spring break. We took our granddaughter down to uh, Shipshawana, and this is in one of the uh, I think it's called the mill or something in Shipshawana. They have a uh, carousel on the uh, the top floor of the mill there, and uh, I just. That's cool. I actually did that with, yeah, this was done with my Nikon. I just kind of, uh, I didn't have a tripod, so I set it on top of one of those fence, uh, picket fence things there and just kind of uh, did kind of an intentional blur. Uh, bottom left um, <laughs> kind of fills the frame. Um, I don't know if it breaks the rule of odds or not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not counting them. Yeah. I think when I did it, I actually did 52 uh, different faces in there. We can count them if we want, but uh, <laughs> I would I wouldn't want to meet any of them in the dark alley. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> and those are actually just uh, a couple of little stone heads that I've had in my office at Grand Valley forever. Oh, really? And, uh, so just kind of put those the and that's a 52 frames from last year. It was uh, the challenge was chaos. And I guess it is kind of chaos there. So, for sure. And then the other one uh, was from intentional blur, and actually the blur of the juggling there at the bottom right um, was done post processing. Uh, I don't actually juggle. My, oh, my I was going to ask you if you could entertain us at the next yeah. meeting. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of my grandsons uh, does juggle, but uh, he was busy at the. At, at the, the moment time. so that's yeah. hard that juggling is hard <laughs> so i uh i just kind of faked it there uh, very nice the, uh, post processing <laughs> oh. so okay um and hey, hey. how did how did i miss Ev oh evie you didn't send me any did you so i sent a bunch of elephants too but I yeah don't right know. uh they're they're in the regular slideshow so uh, okay yeah Okay, now let me stop this. And uh, hi, Tim. Uh, I noticed you uh, popped in during the, the slideshow there, so so welcome. And you're you're on mute there. So, okay, cool. Um, now um, I want to start with a little video before we start talking about um, tonight. We're going to talk about inspiration or getting inspired or what inspires you to take uh, your photos and so on. So I do have a little interesting video here that I want to uh, to show you and then we can kind of chat about him. Are you seeing this guy? Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, why isn't he playing? Oh, that's because I'm clicking on the wrong spot. What's the point of you being a photographer? You've probably been sold a lie by places like Instagram that the point of being a photographer is to create images with the express intent of sharing them with a worldwide audience. This ability to reach millions of people with your photographs for free is a novel concept in photography. 
It's also planted the seeds of discontent for tens of thousands of photographers who have bought in to the idea that the only way to be considered a photographer is to harvest likes and followers. So what would happen if Instagram just shut down overnight or stopped promoting still images altogether? If no one saw your photography, how would that change you as a photographer? Hmm. As it has it. In 2007, a storage container was put up for auction to cover the overdue rent. And what was hidden inside that container would bring into question the very idea that you need to show your photographs to anyone at all. Unlike today's world, back in those murky mists of time, for amateur photographers, the only way that ever people would get to see your images if you were published in a magazine or you did well in some national competition and you got some eyeballs on your images that way but mostly your photography would go pretty much more or less unseen so really what we consider today to be normal this ability for our images to be shown to random strangers across the globe is actually a gift behind or gift beyond anything we could really comprehend and that is the real problem it's warped our perspective about what photography should be these days, the focus is on pleasing the viewer because the more viewers are pleased, the more views your images get and the more views that they get, the more you feel validated as, as a photographer. It's time to reconsider why we take photographs and to help you rediscover the joy of creating images and, and the pleasure at the heart of photography. So I invite you to help me open that door to that storage container and explore the mystery within. Instead of listening to that constant stream of waffle that is force feeding you the idea that the only way to be a proper photographer is to create images that others will swoon over, let's meet the poster child for photography that was created simply for an audience of one. Prior to 2009, pretty much no one had ever really heard of Vivian Meyer. She had spent her entire life working as a nanny and a caregiver. So in that storage container, which was bought in 2007, there were over 100,000 negatives that Maya had created over the course of her life, which were a complete surprise. By anyone's reckoning, that's a sizable body of work, especially when you consider that all of it is on film. But the real kicker here is that she wasn't some photographer who'd been lost to history or had fallen out of fashion. No, Maya was a completely unknown photographer of rare and unusual skill. Quietly and unassumingly over the span of 50 years, this Mary Poppins-like figure would go out during her spare time with her Rolleiflex and just take photographs. Just photos for the love of it. Not with the intent of becoming a professional photographer or selling prints to galleries, but just for that simple pleasure. This in itself isn't really all that remarkable. You know, after all, prior to the internet, most amateur photographers' work was, was barely seen outside their immediate circle. However, these days, photographers seem, in general, to feel like they're almost entitled to have people see their photography. And it has warped the perspective of being, what being a photographer, or at least being a successful photographer, you know, looks like. To give you an example, on, on Instagram, which is, you know, the, probably the world's premier photo sharing place, the most liked photograph with 55 million likes, is 55 million more than the population of the UK is, what well, can you guess what it is? Is it some majestic scene of rare beauty, a touching moment between a mother and a baby, or something from the cover of the family of man that was chosen carefully by Edward Steichen? No, it's an egg. <laughs> Just an egg. 55 million likes. If likes are a measure of how good a photo is, then this must be the greatest photograph of, of all time. But of course, it isn't. It shows how stupid it is to chase likes as a photographer. When what you should be doing is what Vivian Mayer did, creating photographs that please you first and foremost. Vivian Mayer's photography is a reminder about how success isn't measured in a few pixels on a screen that turn a different color. Now, I'm aware that the irony of, of the whole idea that it took Flickr to give exposure to Maya's photography, you know, and we shouldn't lose sight of that. And it does raise a question like, what would Vivian have made of this most public display of her photography when quite clearly she didn't really seem to care too much for the opinion 
of other people about her images. And it's quite possible that given the very private nature of her personality, that this fame, if you want to call it, would have rested very uneasily on her shoulders. So this is not where her success lay. Her success lay in her ability to not really care about what other people thought of her photography to that point where basically no one saw her images. She understood that the act of showing her photography wasn't required to validate her as a photographer. And this is a lesson that we should all take to heart. Because whether or not you choose to show your images or who you choose to show them to, in no way should lessen you as a photographer. Maya's photography has been likened to Robert Frank. And the only difference really between Robert Frank and Maya is that Frank was actively promoting the viewing of his photography. Does it make him more of a photographer than Maya, who was extremely zealous about not letting anyone show her images? The fact that her work was created just for herself is completely irrespective. It's only in the modern world with, and the ease with which we can reach an audience for our photography that has given rise to this, this foolish idea that if you don't show your photography, then you're somehow not a real photographer. Maya seems to have found her dopamine fix, which these days seems to come from the likes of, of random strangers with us, from the simple pleasure of creating and printing a photograph. So whatever joy she derived from the process, it's quite clear that showing the photography didn't really feature in it. She clearly wasn't seeking validation from other photographers or subconsciously changing her approach to fit in with what was popular at the time. What defines you as a photographer? It's not how many people you show your work to or, or what have you. It's the dedication that you put into your images. And dedication is very different to skill. It's sticking with something. Now, Maya's photography didn't become what it is because she took you know, her, her idea of success as random validation from, from strangers or asking if something looks better in color or black and white. Her photography improved and she became the photographer that she is, was, because she dedicated herself to the simple act of taking photographs that interested her. And, and, and that is the, the pretty much the only reason. And she did that for five decades. Think back to when you first picked up a camera or you took a photograph. It's extremely unlikely that the first thought that you had when taking that image was that you should create something shareworthy. No, you most likely took that photograph because the thing in front of you interested you. It caught your attention somehow. In the words of Gary Winogrand, you photographed the world to see what it looked like photographed. Vivian's whole body of photography is in this spirit, and that's the spirit I want you to channel. That inquisitiveness, to see the world, what it looks like when captured in one's camera, is, is everything. Let's stop worrying about who or who won't see our photography or how we can get it to a wider audience, and instead remember why we are taking photographs in the first place. There will be other ways to share your photographs if that's what you really want. There will be other places where you can enjoy photography. But never let this idea of having to show your photographs again to be considered a real photographer ever take hold in your mind. Maya certainly didn't. Click here for a video on how to start breaking free of the stranglehold that social media has on your photography. Okay, so... Kind of interesting. I, that was really love, good. Really good. I, yeah, I love some of her good. images. <clears throat> In fact, I loved all of her images, to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, that one especially where the, uh, I think it was a construction worker was holding up a mirror. Yeah, that was and, amazing. And you could see her reflection in it. So, yeah. so what do you think? Uh, I know I... You know, I, I always tell people one of the reasons I uh, I do competition so much isn't for the score or anything. It's uh, to let people see my work. But uh, um, any any comments? So that, that camera reminded me of when I was in college. It was uh, I was uh, they had a school photographer, an outside guy, and he had an extra roll Rolex Rolly. How do you say it? Rolex, yeah. Yeah, Rolex. And um, my job was to go around and just 
take pictures of people that weren't looking at me. And it was um, a shock to me because I wasn't on the yearbook, a committee that chose photos to see my work and it was black and white and it was quite enjoyable. And I wasn't out to get lights. I, I would hope that he could do some of them. And so that was fun uh, to see that camera and her, her spontaneous work did a lot of street photography. Yeah. Okay. Any, anybody else uh, comments or? It's uh, uh, street photography and candid shots and all that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think there's a, I don't think you can count on there, there being a, uh, a high percentage of agreement on on some of them. I think that most of those shots that she did, if entered in uh, PJ, uh, might be failures. Yep. But then it gets back to, well, why are you doing it? Are you doing it so you can try and get a 15 or are you doing it because that's what you like to do and and unless it's seen by a lot of people you know then then you know sharing it is all part of the the fun uh, right. oh sure yep without right. sharing it you know then it yeah could be yeah. locked up in a vault forever and like hers like hers yep. yeah so uh, getting the score is um uh for people that are highly competitive they enjoy that in the club they really do and and some people get so upset that they <laughs> they uh they you they cause all kinds of ruckus Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Uh, I, it, you, there was a ex member that would score on Wednesday and then slaughter the club on Facebook the next day. Really? <laughs> I'm glad it, it's an ex member. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Yeah. But well, uh, I think you have to do it for the love of it. Um, I could spend, if I went down to Trader Joe's and bought a dozen or two of roses and just set them in a vase in my wild lit area, um, I could spend half a day just getting different close-ups and working those roses. And one time I, I did that and printed it and a friend of mine said, I love that. Can you make me a copy and frame it? Or get it framed and she was a, a close friend and I said sure so that was very flattering but I didn't do it for that reason I just did it for the love of the flower and uh, yep. the, the so many different now it's killing me not to go to the tulip festival but I've got major things going on so I'll miss those tulips so mm -hmm. I can spend a long time out there well you can't get in for the next couple of days you know what's going on on Windmill Island? And what? Moving. Moving. Owning a movie. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Are they really? Mm -hmm. That's, what is it, the basis of uh, the Yellow Bit Road? Well. It's, it's I, kind of a convoluted story. The, the City of Holland is one title I heard, and it's starring... Natalie something. No. It was one of Tom Cruise's exes, wasn't it? He's had several. Yeah. Uh, not anyway, the Australian. Regardless of who it was, they didn't even figure she would be in town, that they were using this, this filming day or two or three, uh, depending on the weather, as... Uh, uh, just the background shots, uh, mm -hmm. and that then they were going to film the most of it in 
Las it's Vegas Nicole, or something. Nicole Kidman, that's who you're yeah. thinking of. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, really? Yeah, she's top flight. Wow. So, uh, Tulip Festival is starting this week or next week? Or? Mm. Next week. Next, next week? week. Mm hmm. Well, Joan, you got to hang on to those tulip pictures because the signed subject this time is uh, three shots of the same uh, oh same subject. So there you go. Find me, <laughs> find me some tulips, and that was to yeah. do Sunday. Okay, where will I find tulips? Go to the grocery oh, are, store. <laughs> are they due already? No, they're due uh, May third, probably. So, but but those are uh, um, prints, right? Uh, yeah. No, no. Can be. Can be, yeah. But it can it can be digital. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, um, are you seeing the new screen here? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. All right. So we'll uh, just kind of move in tonight. Um, we've already uh, talked about him, so. And, uh, you know, we're talking about inspiration, and uh, after seeing those images, uh, I, I really love black and white, for one thing, but uh, uh, I'm also always interested in street photography, so I, yeah. I think I'm, I think I'm going to be inspired to, uh, to go out and do a little more of that. But uh, So anything, anyway, um, what inspires others? Uh, these are just a couple of things I've, uh, I found online, and... Uh, they're from a site called My Modern Met, and I think it's a Metropolitan Art Museum, mm. and uh, <laughs> they um, they send you a weekly um, email talking about different different things in art and photography and so on. Um, so anyway, um, this particular person, uh, Tom Bob, which is an interesting name on its own, <laughs> goes out and. Uh, Obviously, he's an artist, not a not a photographer, but photographers are artists also. Um, but he finds uh, unique things and then uh, does the paintings to change them. And uh, that also kind of intrigues me to uh, to maybe go out and find the same kind of things and then some do and do some uh, composite work with them. Uh, I love the one on the uh, the top right there with the the reflecting mirror and. Uh -huh. the, uh, the man holding it up, uh, and being an ex-sailor, um, I love the one on the dock there with the uh, the sailor in the picture and so on. So anyway, um, again, something that uh, that might inspire you know just to go out again, maybe uh, it's kind of a version of street photography mm -hmm. but to go out and find stuff and uh, you know see how you can adapt it to uh, to your photography. So. Um, the other one, I found this is really interesting. I'm not sure how Chris pulled this off, but a uh, man tracks down people he photographed yeah, in the yeah. street 40 years ago Isn't that and re recreated oh. their pictures. And I know I've seen <laughs> some of these on Facebook, uh, you know, occasionally, not not his work maybe, but, uh, you know, people have done a, uh, a family reunion and had a picture from like 30, mm -hmm. 40 years ago. Oh, right. and then recreate it with the uh, the other people. So apparently he must have not only photographed these people, but really made a uh, made a connection with them. Right. Um, and, you know, those of us who are doing 52 frames, um, it sounds like the most daunting challenge is the one, the picture of a stranger uh, challenge, where you actually go out and take a photo of a stranger. Mm -hmm. And apparently, uh, you know, Chris is conquered that uh, that fear of meeting new people and taking photos of them and so on. So I just kind of found that that interesting that uh, this was a uh, a motivation or an inspiration for him. So okay, um a couple things and I just put um some of my ideas in um and I know Evie shared some images with me that uh, she's going to talk about also. But um over the winter um I got to thinking about, I, I did a couple of years at uh, Ferris uh, in architectural program before I uh, decided I'd become a teacher instead and went to Western. But uh, one of the things I had to do was take a uh, an art history class 
And I actually fell in love with two, um, two artists. Uh, one was Salvador Dali. And I did mm -hmm. get a chance uh, when we were in uh, St. Petersburg uh, several years ago on our, on our sailboat. Um, I had a chance to visit his museum. But uh, so over the winter, I just kind of uh, did some research on Salvador. And uh, from time to time, I tried to, to mimic some of his work. So that's kind of my inspiration. So the, uh, the clock, the warping clocks is one that... Um, Classic, yeah. Gave, gave me the idea for the uh, the bottom photo there um, using a couple of clocks that we have and then uh, in uh, I use affinity photo and one of the tools in affinity is something called liquify so uh -huh. just kind of uh, played well, around with photo, those and Photoshop also has liquify oh do they have a liquify too yeah, yeah. In, the, in the filter section mm -hmm. okay um, you know I used Photoshop version one <laughs> a long, long time ago, and then uh, kind of got out of photography when I was sailing a lot and uh, just kind of jumped back in. And a friend of mine was using uh, Affinity and uh, talked me into using that. But I think I think they're very, very similar, you know. So yeah, they, anyway, uh, that... mimic each other. And, yeah. And mm -hmm. then nowadays, well, two days ago, Photoshop. Uh, came out with a new version, or Lightroom did, and has a their, their own version of denoise. Yeah, I oh. saw that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, every bit as good as Topaz denoise. Oh, oh that's really? good to know. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay, so um, that's one of the ways I get inspiration. Uh, and this is another uh, Salvador Dali uh, inspiration. Um, again, not warping clocks, but uh, <laughs> warping, warping my body through an hourglass there. So, uh, and I, I think I might have had this one in club competition. I know I showed it at um, uh, Grand Valley Artists, but I don't know if I put it in competition or not. But uh, so again, just uh, kind of uh, mimicking uh, some of the Salvador stuff. The interesting thing was uh, the previous one, um, whoops, too far, that one. Uh, <laughs> shortly after I did that one, uh, Randy Nyhoff came out with one uh, also inspired by uh, Salvador Dali. So uh, it, that was kind of fun. So, okay, um, whoops, too far. No, we're good. Okay, Evie, your turn. Okay. <laughs> well, a um, few years back, I um, was creating some, I had a girlfriend who um, was looking to purchase some uh, photography for a um, girlfriend that was having a baby. And so she um, got really excited about some of this work I was doing and um, I took some elephants and I blended them with a number of uh, pictures I had taken and some of these um, images, like for instance, the one on the bottom right, the elephant with the um, tree that's, it's actually a cloud tree. The cloud is uh, made by um just brushes photoshop brushes and then the moon is also made with a photoshop brush so i put a lot of moons and suns in my images but um most of the elephants were taken either at a fair or a zoo so and then i just added crazy stuff to it it was fun mm -hmm. The um, one in the middle, the background is a NASA background. You can get them online. They're free. And so I thought I'd put that one in there. And um, then the one on the left, it started with a hot air balloon that I went to that Hudsonville um, fair, and they do hot air balloons there. Mm -hmm. so, 
started with that and then just kept adding to it. The gulls were from South Haven Beach one day and um, yeah, so that's how that one came together. But mm -hmm. I just had fun putting stuff together, mm -hmm. playing around with it. Oh, sure. I, yeah. I, I should look, I was able to go to the Albuquerque Hot Air Balloon Festival. I was working in Albuquerque and I spent two days with my net up in the air. And uh, <laughs> I, I should do something with those because some of them are, are playful and some of them are beautiful. So this gave yes. me inspiration, Evie. <laughs> to do well, the, um, the day we went to watch the hot air balloons go up, they didn't go up because the weather turned bad. So you yeah. never know. But it was, it was amazing just listening to them. And yes. The, the, they, they mor the morning glow. Yeah. After glow. Yeah. It's beautiful, really. Well, I had paid a lot of money uh, and reserved a hot air balloon ride. I thought, what better way to take pictures of the hot air balloons? You could be, you know, with them. And that I got up at 5 a.m., did all the right stuff, and they were loading the gondolas, and same thing happened. They canceled it. They canceled the whole uh, hot air balloon that day because of the weather. Mm -hmm. And that, that's in October, so it, it gets nasty in the mountains sometimes. So sure. that's, and I got a voucher, but I, I bet you if you asked me, I couldn't find it. I could go back <laughs> out there and yeah. try it again. There you go. You know, so I'm Evie, you, Evie, you mentioned NASA. I've also grabbed some background photos from the Hubble telescope, mm. which, which also give you some really, really cool backgrounds if you're doing uh, composite sort of things and yeah. Sort of, yeah how about that james webb do they have images yet online from that i'm not sure i i haven't checked yeah, on they, that they have a lot of images online from that i i don't know uh the format and whether you can grab them but probably mm -hmm. yeah, kind of fun i would like that yep Okay, and uh, okay, a couple more Evies. Yep. Okay, um, the one on the left, um, the background is um, Lake Superior, and uh, the front of that background is all the ice. Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah, I just grabbed the planets. They were another brush, and they were all um, uh, different brushes. So I put those in there, and yeah, just kind of made it whimsical. Yeah, it's cool. I love and, it. And then the bottom right is, I um, forgot what I called it, but it's this little elephant, and he's dreaming about the carnival and <laughs> he's like up in the heavens watching it. But mm -hmm. what I did was I took, and I don't know if you can tell this, what be beneath him is the cloud, but it's actually a mirrored image of him that I turned white. So. Oh yeah. I, I see it. No, I see the tail. I kind of see a foot. Yeah. yeah. And so I thought the it'd be a good right way to make it like a shadow, but make it white. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, fun. So these things just pop into your head, Evie? Yeah. <laughs> and have you been drinking or no? <laughs> or or smoke, smoking something? No. <laughs> Whimsical you know, is fun. I, I get my best thoughts when I wake up like five in the morning and uh, have to go to the bathroom and don't, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> write it down, write it down. Well, that's the problem. I don't write it down and then I forget it. <laughs> so. And the next morning, you don't remember. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Okay, great. Thank you, Abby. Okay, um, I mentioned, you know, a couple of photographer artists that I, I really liked uh, in my art history class. The other one was uh, Hieronymus Bosch, uh, a Dutch artist who, um, being Dutch, I just had to love him. So um, this was one of his photos that always intrigued me and I over the winter uh, came up with these two different ones uh, I, uh, I've gotten into fairy photos um, 
I bought a couple of little statues and started photographing them. And uh, then I, I found out that if I go to Horrocks Market, they have quite a selection of fairy statues. And rather than buying them, I just kind of wander around with my camera and shoot them. So, <laughs> so the, uh, the, the center one is uh, kind of a tape off, take off on uh, Hieronymus's uh, photo there. And the, after I whenever that we one, go grocery shopping, I'm off shooting vegetables in the vegetable section. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm in the flower section uh, doing it. <laughs> Well, we, we should have a workshop someday and just go to Horax <laughs> and shoot whatever ne we like. I've never you know. been asked to leave. So no, well, not yet. <laughs> well, and I, you know, I even at Horax repositioned some of the little statues so I could get a better shot and so on. <laughs> you're bad. <laughs> and uh, I guess it helps that you can buy beer and wine at Horax while you're shopping. Yeah. Though, too, you know, so. I, so I did, any however, get, get thrown out of uh, Rivertown Mall one day for... Sorry, baby. I, brought in my big camera and I was shooting pictures of their ceiling up there and apparently they were worried that I might be looking where best to structurally place an explosive. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Well I was almost arrested in Albuquerque at the Albuquerque Mall on Christmas Eve. Uh, they had a beautiful Christmas tree and behind it was the Sandia Mountains. And I stepped into the mall, which of course was closed. And here comes the RoboCop. And we <laughs> really had a hassle. And I finally stepped out into the street because that wasn't their property. And I told um, oh, one of the managers uh, at, we're staying at, um, they put us up at, oh, a Hilton, whatever they call them. He said, let me give you my phone number in case <laughs> i mean <yeah. laughs> but uh you got he was protective i said i'm not using it to sell it i just want it but anyway yeah, there I, you go. I yeah. so we anyway got, the okay. go, go ahead we got kicked off navy navy pier for shooting pictures really yeah. that's Chicago. so big well, and, yeah that's so the kelly walcott apparently got rather stern with a Chicago, big Chicago cop when she was under the the overhead train down there and was trying to make shots of it. And mm. He said, uh, you can't do that. And she says, I'm in a public place, I can too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then he gave her a look that she realized, no, she better move I probably can't. <laughs> <laughs> I better move on. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's for sure. So anyway, that that center one was just kind of a a takeoff on uh, on that one, and then I got thinking, uh, you know, since marijuana is legal now, and I do grow my own, um, I should do a pothead photo. So oh, uh, that's my, that, the pot looks very nice on you. <laughs> that's that's my that's my pothead photo there. So, and again, just kind of an inspiration from Hieronymus. I should probably put a. Uh, a gecko in my left eye, though. I, I think either. so. I think or right so. eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> okay. Nice. And uh, my favorite uh, photo of his is Gardens of Delights, but I don't think that would go over in the uh, in the camera club. So if anybody's seen Garden of Delights, but uh -uh. Uh, <laughs> well, go look it up. <laughs> okay. Okay. I... So. Um, that's, uh, you know, yeah. kind of the way that uh, I find some inspiration and Evie finds some inspiration. Uh, this is from uh, 15, it's an on at Wix.com, uh, 15 ideas to spark your photography inspiration. Oh, so nice. um, yeah. um, one, go for a walk. Um, mm -hmm. after, after, I, after I fell and broke my hip on the ice a couple of years ago, um, <laughs> which was embarrassing for a hockey player to uh, slip yep, on the ice is. in his driveway and break his aunt or break his hip. But uh, um, I started walking and now to make the walk in more enjoyable when I do walk, I, uh, I try to take neighborhood pictures uh, of interesting things I find in the neighborhood. So, you know, that can be a, a way of inspiration also. So uh, go for a walk is one way to find right. inspiration. Um, sure. browse other people's work, which, uh, you know, is kind of what, uh, 
what I did can, with uh, Hieronymus Bosch and Dolly and stuff. Can you go stuff? back to that? I want to write that down to spark. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, Wix, Wix. If you search for Wix, uh, Wix. dot com, and then fifteen ideas to spark your. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. go, go ahead. No problem. Okay. Um, so yeah, but you know, also um, when I first started in the club, uh, uh, actually before I joined the club, uh, I went to an art prize and ran into Randy Nyhoff and uh, saw Ooh, wow. some of his work. Mm -hmm. some of his work during art prize and kind of fell in love with it and that's kind of what inspired me to get back in so uh, and you know uh, as i just mentioned from the video i showed uh, you know with the, the lady doing street photography i'm kind of inspired now to uh, to take a look at doing more street photography also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially when when nice weather gets here if it ever gets here you know yeah. so <laughs> um, okay um Why did I do this one? I'm not sure. Okay, this is just another uh, way you might get inspired, especially for those who are into uh, uh, doing composite photography and so on. Um, Vincent, uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce his, his name. Anybody speak mm -hmm. French? Or, mm -hmm. or yeah. uh, whatever. Whatever. So um, I found some of these. Uh, in fact, uh, this particular... Uh, site also uh, 121 clicks um i don't know how many examples of his photos were in here but uh, some really really interesting uh, composite photos so. well yeah magic okay um find new perspectives i i love this photo this was uh, again from that 15 ideas to spark mm. your uh, mm -hmm. inspiration uh obviously shot from below like on a piece of glass i would imagine but uh, as soon as i saw this i said wow what a what a great photo this is so you know finding uh, stuff that just kind of intrigues you and kind of do your own take on it so um i don't know what i would do with this dog that sleeps 18 hours a day but i <laughs> too big for glass <laughs> yeah there you go he is <laughs> i almost yeah. thought that he took a picture of a of a cat falling and trying to right itself, but you can see the well the flatness of mm. the paws. Yeah, <laughs> that that could be too. <laughs> but we, I was just sitting in the backyard in the sun before we started, and uh, we have a neighborhood cat that just comes around every day, and I'm trying to make friends with it, and we're we're getting close. So. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't uh, see it yet? Uh, no, and what I'm worried about is somebody just moved out on the corner. Had a the cat was always in his yard, and I'm not sure if it's his cat and if he left it, or, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> or if it's just a neighborhood cat. But anyway, so uh, yeah, you know, uh, find new perspectives on on how you take your photos. Um, okay, um, another way is to join photo challenges, and you know, I talked about 52 frames uh, at Camera Club, and there's lots of uh, mm -hmm. online photo groups uh, also uh, that aren't quite as structured as uh, 52 frames is, where you have to do something every week, but mm -hmm. uh, lots of different ways. Um, Evie, you want to talk about yours? This was just last week. In fact, this is the one that Evie got uh, 52 fix on, so. <laughs> yeah, well, um, cup of coffee. Uh, kid in a, in a boat. Um, this is the, off my dining room table, and I uh, threw some smoke on there, uh, smoke brushes, and very yeah. clever, very clever. I, How fun! I wish I would have straightened that tablecloth a little bit because it's the lines oh, are a little bit crooked. But I didn't know. I don't think people are drawn to see that initially. Yeah. Yeah, no, I honey. think that little yellow I, hat draws yeah. your eye in anyway. <laughs> right, yeah. right. I love it. I yeah. love it. Thanks. No, the, the diagonal of the background doesn't doesn't bother me um, mm -mm. Un until you picked it out and all heavy. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, then, actually, uh, if, do you know Linda Greer? Yes. Okay. Linda um, inspired me with this because I saw her. I haven't seen her for months. Saw her last week at 
GVA and she was showing me what she had done with coffee cups and photos. And I thought, mm. Mm, mm-hmm. okay, you inspired me. <laughs> there we there go. go. Yeah. Debbie, so, that, that might be a good one to suggest for an assigned subject. Yeah. Co- coffee cups. Yeah. With subject. <laughs> right. It would be. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, the 52 frames uh, challenge uh, last week was dreamscapes or was it the week before? Week um, before. Anyway. Yeah, dreamscapes. And the one on the left is my, again, I mentioned I wake up at, if I wake up early in the morning, can't get back to sleep, stuff hits me. (laughs) And I had a bunch of mushroom photos that I took last summer uh, in the wild, and I decided I would create mushroom people. So uh, that was, (laughs) that was kind of my, uh, Mm -hmm. kind of my crazy dream, I guess, so. Maybe I'm dreaming these things and remember them. I don't know. So anyway, so yeah, if you join, you know, some of the photo challenge groups um, that, and again, you know, 52 frame, frames is pretty, pretty structured, but um, there are lots of other ones um, that you can hop on online and uh, get some inspiration there too. So um, try a new genre. Um, I tried a couple of years ago to do this type of photography, the, um, the star stuff and, uh, speaking of Linda Greer, right. Uh, mm-hmm. no, who is it? Robin Portine. Who's Robin. In, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's doing yeah, the Robin dark Port- sky Michigan stuff. Right. Yeah. And, um, uh, we rented a cottage, uh, just North of Pentwater during spring break a few couple of years ago. And, uh, I gave it a shot. We got some great storms coming across the lake that night, but, uh, it's something I really have to work a little bit more on, I guess, to uh, to get into that. But, you know, trying any kind of new genre, um, whether it be street photography, nature, uh, whatever, is a good way to, to find some inspiration. So uh, take a trip. Um, now that COVID's over, I guess that's a possibility. And, uh, you know, even during COVID, uh, my wife and I on Sunday afternoons, we call it our COVID distraction. Um, we just go out for a ride and we did the left, right thing. We'd drive for a mile or two and I'd say, okay, left or right. And she would decide which way to go. And, uh, and we kept repeating that until we were very lost. And I kept thinking, uh, <laughs> good, good thing we have GPS, you know, so, right. but, uh, yeah, just finding new environments to, uh, to inspire you in different ways, uh, certainly helps, uh, uh, I've mentioned before, my son's in Taiwan. I really want to go back because we only saw a portion of uh, what I'd like to, but uh, also uh, there's lots, you know, I sailed for over 30 years and so on. Uh, we sold our sailboat so we could travel on land and then uh, COVID hit, so we haven't done much land travel, but that's that's in our future here. So, so anyway, uh, taking a trip, uh, develop a new skill. Um, you know, whether it's uh, camera techniques or post-processing. Um, my big COVID distraction uh, when it was really kicking in was to uh, to play more with post-processing. Right. And that's when, I, that's when I started into Affinity and really started uh, playing with it. And plus, my, uh, my granddaughter was doing online school at the time. So she sat next to me, did her schoolwork. And uh, I did post processing and played with uh, affinity and so on. So uh, developing new skills certainly can uh, increase your uh, inspiration. Um, I would really love to get into uh, <laughs> to bird photography and nature photography, but uh, I tell everybody that uh, I hate to take picture of anything that moves. It makes me nervous. So uh, <laughs> I got you. I guess. I guess I'm better with post-processing and architectural photography or something like that. But anyway, uh, so yeah, developing a new skill, um, create a photo essay. Um, I mentioned my walks that I take and, uh, you know, do uh, photographs on my walk. And uh, at some point I'm going to put together a little uh, photo essay or a little photo story about uh, walking on the west side in Grand Rapids. So That's a good idea. You can find some interesting stuff. Um, at Grand Valley, um, I taught the uh, technology classes for uh, future teachers uh, for several years. 
And one of the things we really got into was um, uh, digital storytelling uh, and had our students work with that and uh, hopefully, you know, apply it to their classrooms and so on. So uh, I, I have fun with digital storytelling, but I haven't, uh, haven't really got back into it. So, but um, creating a photo essay uh, or a personal project. And uh, this is one that uh, I mentioned I got into fairies not too long ago. <laughs> and uh, I just made this my personal project to, uh, as I, and again, all these backgrounds uh, were either taken at our, uh, we have a uh, permanent campsite up, up north by uh, Big Rapids, either taken up there or on my walks in the neighborhood here. So all the backgrounds are, are photos that I did uh, taking walks or just wandering in the woods and then uh, just kind of incorporated my, uh, my fairy pictures uh, with them and um, the Chinese might like it. They're going to build a lithium factory up in big rapids. As oh, I, I know hear. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they're, they're raising Thank a fuss. Thank you, Governor Whitmer. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, just a um, little aside. Yeah. So anyway, um, just this past, um, what was it? Last, last Friday, uh, I hung a show at, um, the uh, Lowell Library uh, with all my, I called it the myth mythical forest um, with fairies and forest creatures and so on. Uh, I think it's 20, uh, 20 different prints that are at the, uh, well, the Lowell Library right now. That's so, neat. Uh, Very good. So uh, I didn't mean, I thought the kids would get a kick out of it, but uh, I had a ball doing this. So again, just starting some sort of a personal project. Um, and now that I've done the mushroom men, I think I might get into some mushroom pictures too. So we'll see. <laughs> so anyway, uh, some personal project. And, uh, you know, the last one, uh, just remind yourself why you fell in love with photography and, uh, you know, take a step back. And, uh, you know, this year um, I decided I wasn't worrying so much about um, competition and scores and, uh, pleasing people, I decided I was just going to please myself. So uh, my images are going to be probably a lot different from time to time than, than what I usually do, but uh, just decided to have fun. So anyway, um, so that is the end of that. Let me stop this. Okay. Uh, any comments, uh, thoughts, uh, whatever? No, I, I got inspired. I I probably talked too much, so. <laughs> no, we'll just talk over you if we need to, okay? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Good. I liked that video um, that you showed, and I think that would be good for the whole group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, it's, it's good to have some discussions like that, so. Nice inspiration. Yeah. Um, now, uh, next month, what I'm going to do, I've gotten tired of putting putting together the presentations. <laughs> no, I, I haven't. I, I, yeah. I love doing it. But, uh, and you know, that's been my job for uh, many, many years. I taught in the curriculum or worked in the curriculum office for Grand Rapids Public Schools. Uh, so it's kind of what I've done for years, writing curriculum and lesson plans and that kind of thing. Um, but next month, what I'd like you to do is to, so far we talked about um, AI and photography, breaking the rules, um, inspiration. So what I'd like you to do um, for next month is to have everybody send me different photos and so on inspired by uh, by what we've done in these Zoom talks so far, and we'll just kind of have a sharing night where everybody can uh, kind of share some photos and so on. Good. And uh, I just kinda, found my balloon. Go there, so. mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. So, and you know, if anybody has any ideas um, for future Zooms, um, mm -hmm. Steve and I kind of rack our brains here to come up with different subjects and so on. So, uh, you know, just. Let me know if you have an idea what you want to do, or if anybody you know is into something that they want to share at some point. Um, that would be great too. You know, we're kind of uh, kind of loose here. It's just kind of 
get together and chat and have fun, you know, and uh, well, I'm, see what we come up I'm with. Glad. So. glad I joined you guys tonight. Very nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> any, questions? any comments, uh, questions? Uh, oh. Anybody want to share anything? I, I just um, was watching a YouTube video. Uh, a guy was talking about maybe 25 different types of photographer photography where AI is really going to take over some of it, mm -hmm. like the um, advertising, advertising, right. And, um, you know, you have to pay a model and all this mm -hmm. stuff. Well, you can get that same thing with AI. Mm -hmm. So um, I can understand that going by the way, I think Old Navy is using AI for all their displays now. But on the other end of the spectrum, there is a lot of photography that cannot use AI. For instance, um, portrait photography, right. portraits, uh, photojournalism. Mm -hmm. And he just went on. There's um, so many that fine art photography um, hasn't gone by the way of AI either. So. Anyway, I was kind of inspired with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If Evie, if you think of it, send me the uh, the link, and we can we could share that next time too. So. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's um he he didn't have very many views. He's uh, more on the creative end, um, and advertising. But um, what he shared was very informative. So I'll try to find it again. Yeah. And you know, after the uh, after the program I did, did last week, uh, at first I didn't think it came out as well as I thought it would. We had some technical problems <laughs> before the meeting started, so I was kind of rattled halfway through the program. But uh, no, it came but, out. Uh, but I think uh, you know, I guess there probably will be some discussion about. Uh, you know how I, AI is going to affect the club and and so on. Uh, personally, I see no problem with you know like if you're doing composites and you have an AI image for a background or something or just one little image you want to pop in pop in. I don't see a problem with that. Um, yeah. Maybe other people do. I don't know, but uh, uh, you know in some of the categories, looking at open and uh, creative uh, you know you can go online and find elements and pop them in so i don't see a problem with uh, having AI be part of a problem or photo where it's your whole entry i i can see problems with that but uh, right. you know as long as the the center of focus the topic is something you've done uh, i don't know does anybody feel differently or no i i agree and well, 52 frames is pretty strict on limiting AI. Right. Yeah. So, Steve, uh, I know you have some, some, you mentioned some things at the meeting the other night, but. Uh, yeah, I, I think it, like many things in life, it's balance. Um, and uh, we need to maintain balance. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to uh, have AI make all of us irrelevant. No, right. no. Right. Because then there's no club. Uh, uh, your art form disappears off from under you. Um, I just saw uh, Adobe's advertisement for our new program called Firefly. It's in beta. And uh, while it's more uh headed for the graphics and creative side of their world it does include photography uh it mimics some of the other programs that uh, russ showed us at the meeting um there adobe is a good follower they they uh watch other people and uh then they go in and see if they can do it better yeah. yeah. Uh, but they'll never be the first one out with things. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, uh, it should be recognizable that a substantial part of the photo is is you. Now, 
you look at an heavy shot and you say, well, there's nothing in there that's heavy. Yet everything <laughs> is heavy. <laughs> takes the bird, she takes the elephants, she takes the background, she takes all that stuff. Well, with some of the software that's out there, you don't really have to do any of that. And then the question comes up, so did the photographer do anything other than do some kind of a, a composite that uh, got drug in from the great beyond uh, where all pictures go to live? Uh, you look at, uh, at, at, at the database that uh, AI must have in the Adobe world. Mm. Yeah. Billions, trillions of photos that have gone by and uh, uh, documenting, you know, how photographers do things. And so it can go out and in a fraction of a second, snag something that matches what the person's asked for. And, and if that isn't it, I'll give you another one and another one and another one. Well, well this one guy that I was listening to said they already scraped off of the internet all of our pictures that are out there that's part of what they're working with Even yeah well yeah, your stuff a, my stuff in, in the day and age of big data mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. all right so thanks for putting this together yes. i'm inspired well good yeah we we met that. our golden so. Yes, you did. You did. Very, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, everybody right. have a good week and uh, you catch you all later. So. All right. Okay. Thank good you. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye.